Good morning, and thank you for joining us today. For those of you that tried to attend last week, we apologize. We had some technical difficulties with the presentation, but we've got those sort and sorted out. So today we're going to have Pat Sadler go over the installation of the Brookline fencing. So with any questions, you can see in that menu there's a questions box. So please type in your questions and when we get to the end of the seminar, we will go through the questions. If we run out of time, we will make sure to answer those questions and get them back to you either through ourselves or through customer service or through your territory manager. But put in your questions, and if we get through them during the webinar, great. If not, we will respond to you afterwards. And without any further ado, here's Mr. Pat Sadler. Thanks, Doug. Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, we uh, we put up the uh, Brookline fence here and um, decided to take pictures as we were doing it step by step and uh, just to give you some ideas on what you can do with it. So this uh, this PowerPoint is just, uh, just a few sections we put up. Um, but we're going to go through it and we're going to talk about the Brookline. We're going to go through the product offering. Um, and it is, is, in case any of you have got your full color brochure there, it is on page 14 and 15. And your spec sheet is on the very back inside cover on page 58. So if you follow the Brookline there, you'll be able to see all the uh, code approvals and all the offerings as well. Um, we're going to go through the components and uh, do the layout, uh, put gates together, and show you some field fabrication and some uh, alternative installations. So here's the anatomy of the Brookline. This is a breakdown of it. So you've got still reinforcing in the in the rails, uh, in all the bottom rails, um, and in all the top rails for the uh, for the darker colours. Uh, the white and the almond do not have a uh, steel channel in the top rail. Um, you're going to have a heavy wall post. It's the 170 wall. You're going to have uh, an aluminum channel that runs down the post that uh, you actually screw to the post, but it's, uh, it's aluminum for strength. All your pickets are tongue and groove, and we still use the lock rings to hold the rails in place. So Brookline is a horizontal privacy fence. It uh, seems to be a new trend now in the, in the marketplace uh, to go horizontal, and uh, it's taken off well for us. It is in the privacy section of your brochures and books. It's six foot on center, and we, and we do go up to six foot high. And it's designed primarily for stepping. I'm going to show you how to do some racking on it, but it is primarily a step. And like I said, there is still reinforcing in the rails. So the product offering, you're going to get three smooth colors, almond, clay, and uh, white. And the clay will have the steel channel in the top and bottom rail. And you're going to get four textured colors, Sierra, Weathered, Arctic, and Brazilian. And they will have steel channel in top and bottom. Five and six foot high uh, do meet swimming pool code. Uh, four foot would be too low. Uh, we can do the uh, wind zone, the Miami-Dade wind zone code, when you use a 106-inch uh, line post stiffener. All the dark colors are backed by our uh, color last tape protection. And uh, it does have a limited lifetime warranty. And for those of you who are not certain, the sure start protection uh, sure Start is a uh, it's a labor and material uh, warranty for the first five years of the product. Um, any material defect, uh, we will pay a reasonable labor fee to replace that product. So this is your overall section height, just because the the pickets are a build up of the seven inch uh, tongue and groove. Uh, so our four foot ends up be, being 44 and a half inches high, five foot is 58 and a half, and the six foot goes uh, 
after you show the six foot. And this is measured from the bottom of the bottom rail to the top of the top rail. And the gate's going to be the same size to match. So here are your components. Uh, this is the smooth, so this is going to give you the deco rail, um, all your pickets, the locking rings, uh, the screws to hold the channel to the post, and there are your two aluminum stiffeners that are going to go down the post. Uh, this is the uh, certigrain version of it, so obviously not a deco rail, but it still comes with all the pickets and the, uh, the locking rings. The holes are pre-drilled for the lock rings in the end of the rails, and all the pickets are bundled, so each bundle is one section of fence, so you just lay one out every six feet, and those you count in pickets. This just shows the difference between the rails. So you've got your deco rail and you've got your uh, cell grain rail. And then we have the uh, white channel and the black channel. Your posts are all heavy wall. They're all the 170 wall thickness. So you've got 84s, 96s, and 107s. And um, if you need to do a step down and you want us to do it for you, we can do that with a special setup fee. And um, you'll have to be pretty specific in where you want that drop down to be. Here are your pickets. So they're 66 and a half inches long, tongue and groove. They are square cut, so there's no angled cut on the ends like you would get with a vertical fence. And uh, you've got five pieces to a four foot, seven to a five, and nine pieces to a six foot high. And when you install it, it's always good to remember that the tongue faces up. Uh, all the gates that we make internally, the tongues face up. So if you were to install with the tongues facing down, you might be slightly out of line with the gate. Or if you do alternating picket, alternated sections, and you're not watching what you're doing, you could be the line might be a little bit off. So always remember tongue up. These are your end channels. Uh, they are powder coated aluminum. Uh, they're punched, so as they're being as they're being formed, the, the holes are punched in there, so you don't have to pre-drill them. We have white channels for white fence, and then black channels for all other covers. The channel is 60 and a half inches long, and it's one inch by one and a half. And um, it's a lot stronger uh, because all the it's aluminum because all the ends of the pickets are going into that channel, so it's more rigid and holds everything in place than what a plastic uh, or a PVC channel would do. On the PVC channels, you've only got one picket running vertically for the whole thing. This is a screw change that we made that some of you are probably happy about. Uh, it's a self-drilling screw, stainless steel, number two square drive. And uh, I've heard good things about it, so I'm sure you're all happy about that. And that was a running change in 18. So your hardware, you're going to get a bag of screws to put the aluminum channels in place, and you're going to get four locking rings. And the ends of the rails will be pre-drilled for those rings. If you do have to cut a rail short, the the uh, hole for the locking ring is three-eighths of an inch and about one inch in from the end. So we're going to talk about four sections, rack sections uh, on concrete, uh, stepping, uh, gates, rack gates, uh, wall mount brackets, and field fabrication with a template. So it is a, again, we do recommend stepping with this. You'll see a racked fence pretty soon. Um, but stepping is definitely uh, the easier way to do it. And there are templates available. Um, at the end of the presentation. This is the page that you're going to find in the uh, installation manual. Um, so your installation manual is available online. Um, 
Certainty.com, and uh, you'll find this page. This is the page for those who don't want to read instructions. So we highlight all the important areas so that you know what you're supposed to be doing. And this is the page for those who do want to read instructions. So you'll find both of these in that, in that uh, uh, Certainty.com instruction manual. The one thing with this product is that you can't do a 45 degree because the, the uh, channel will not allow you to do it. So you will end up putting end post in if you're going to do a 45 degree angle. So when we do our layout for this particular job I was doing, it was a six to five to four drop down. So what I did is uh, because all the heights are different, I lined up all of my bottom rails. And once the bottom rails are in line, then I could measure across from the top, and that would show me where I was putting the, uh, the other holes for the drop down, like that. So it shows you exactly where you're going to put them. So always line up the bottom rails, because that's uh, unless you're dropping down on the other side of the post, in which case you're going to take that same measurements on the uh, the end post and transfer it to the back of that post and drop it down as far as you need to drop it. So getting started, um, I always put my gate post stiffeners in first, and then I'll put a screw in the very bottom of the post just to hold it in place uh, while I'm bouncing the, the, the post in the hole to get it right. And if you can, it's always good to put those channels on while it's laying horizontally, rather than trying to do it vertically and dropping the screws. This is our routing template. So I was doing this one in the field. Uh, the routing template is a uh, Delrin material. It's a plastic. It will straddle over a 4x4 four four post or a 5x5. Five five. You can see the the unit there is uh, with the bolts running through it. Um, the thing to remember on this is that the guide is five eighths of an inch, and the blade is three eighths of an inch. Uh, and you will find that in the back of the product catalog uh, with those numbers. Um, if you go with any other measurements, you're going to have a hole that's too large or too small. And this is a plunge router that I use. Uh, a plunge router costs a little bit more money, but it's certainly the safest router to use because your blade is always retracting until you need it. And then when you plunge down in, you just go around the template, and it gives you a perfect hole. So we're getting started here. We put the lock rings in the rails, uh, put the bottom rail in place. And I have the channel already attached to the drop-down post on the other side, the transition post. And then we put the first picket in, and again, it's got the uh, got the tongue facing up. And then drop it into the other side. And make sure that first picket bottoms out in that bottom rail so that you're not on a, any kind of an angle. And that the bottom rail's clean. Now, if you get stones built up in there or anything, it's going to give you an uneven, uh, an uneven bottom picket. And you just keep building them up, building them up. And then you take the top rail. I always slide that into the end of the empty post first, and then bring it back over as close as I can to the next post and drop it down and slide it in. And there's your finished panel. So doing the drop down, again, this, this one comes around the corner. So this is going to be a five footer. And channels already attached, bottom rails in. Start building up the pickets. And there's your five footer. And as we come around the corner, this is not just a uh, shorter section in height, but it's also a narrower section. So we had to custom this one. 
So <clears throat> you cut the rail. You've got to make sure your rails are not touching on the inside of the post because you've got to allow for expansion and contraction. And drill your 3 8 inch hole in the end and put the lock-in rings in. And take a measurement between the, uh, the insides of the aluminum and just remember that you've got to allow for the screw heads. So cut those pickets just a, a little bit shorter so that they're going to slide down. And there is your four footer. So six to five to four. Pretty easy. Um, again, you know, when I laid out the post, all the bottoms were lined up and I took my measurements from there. So let's see what you end up getting. So what I did then is I tried to lift the panel. I wanted to see if I could rack it. But there were too many restrictions there. The, the tongue and grooves were all nice and tightly locked together. The pickets were nicely locked in the rail. So when I lifted up the post, it just kind of pulled out of the aluminum. So I gave up on that. But I'll show you what we did afterwards. So here are the gates. Uh, your gates are going to be 50 and a half inches wide if you buy the pre-assembled one. There are extension kits available to take you up to 70 inches. Um, so there are kits which you can use for field building. And um, there's no diagonal braces in any of our gates. So if you're doing a double drive, you're just buying two, two regular gates, and that will, uh, that will suffice for a double drive. And the gate is the same height as the fence. So here's the gate kit. You're going to get uh, two two and a half by four profiles. Uh, you're going to get. They will have the aluminum channel inside of them. You're going to get a bag of screws, two caps, uh, two pieces of aluminum that you're going to put into the horizontal rails uh, in place of the galvanized steel that's in there in the panels. And then an instruction manual that you shouldn't throw away because there's a very important template in there. So here you remove the bottom galvanized steel and replace it with the aluminum in the middle chamber. And if you're making a shoulder gate, the, the um, aluminum and the rail should be the same length. So you build the gate. And the one thing to remember when you're building the gates the first thing you do is going to affect the last thing you do. And that's the aluminum in the vertical post. If that's sticking up too high, it's going to interfere with the cap that you're going to put on at the very end. So you want to tap that aluminum down towards the bottom before you start putting screws in there. So in this case, I built the frame. And then I'm getting a measurement for my pickets. And I found it much easier to just stand it down like a fence and drop all the pickets in. Once the pickets were in place, I took the top rail. And because of the rigidity of the channel, it doesn't collapse in or anything. It went right down over the pickets. And there's my finished gate. It went together very easy. So then I took it, put it on the table, and squared it up. I took my two tape measures and uh, made sure I had the same number on both ones. And then once the gate was all squared, I took my instruction manual, and there is a, uh, a template in there. So the two by six ribbed, um, that's going to give you the positioning of the screws in each corner on the serda grain. And the two by six privacy will do the same on the deco rail. You cut those out and you wrap them around the post. Then you're going to need an 1164 drill bit for a pilot hole. Uh, I would always recommend doing a pilot hole because you, if you just try to drive that screw in, it's going to walk and it's going to walk the aluminum and the gate's going to end up being wider and out of square. So it's much easier just to drill a pilot hole. And then you need a number three square drive to put the screws in.
And there's your finished gate. And always remember, two screws in each corner on the front and two screws in each corner on the back. So you're going to use 16 screws all together and no diagonal brace. This is a little jig that I built, so if you are doing a racked gate, uh, the paper templates are not going to allow you to rack and show you where the aluminum is. Uh, but if you use a jig like this, you can just follow where the aluminum's running and know exactly where to put your screws. And sometimes I use this for a flat gate as well, just you know, if the templates get wet or they get worn, you know, I can just use this and it shows me exactly where those screws have to go. It's very critical that the horizontal and the vertical aluminum are attached. So there's your finished gate. So here was the uh, the wood grain version, and so what we did is we put the uh, put the aluminum channel on there, installed the end post. Put the locking rings in the bottom and put the bottom rail in. And then what I wanted to do, I wanted to do a rack on this one. So I didn't set my corner post because if I had set it, we would have had to get on our hands and knees and try and open up the holes on the bottom. So we kind of temporarily placed it in the corner. And then what we did is we ran the rail up on the angle that we were going to work with. So this is, you know, a lot of a lot of times when I talk to guys out in the field, I ask them, what, uh, how do you figure out the size of the hole when you're doing an angle? And most of them say, well, oh, you know, take a little bit off here, a little bit off there, and keep going back and see if it works. This is going to be a, a, an idea for you to uh, make that a little bit easier. So what I do is I have the row on the angle. I've got it sitting on the speed square, so it's in line with the bottom of the hole. And then I draw a pencil line up the rail, just like that. If I take my tape measure and measure that line and add one eighth of an inch to allow for the wall thickness of the post, that's going to be the size of the hole that I have to make for this particular angle. So this is what it also does for you. So that one line that you put in there is going to give you the angle to cut the rails and the reinforcing channel going to give you the angle for the pickets. It's going to tell you the hole size that you're going to put in the post. And depending on, you know, what the salesman gets you for a post, if you're you know, going down a slope, uh, it's going to show you where that hole comes out at the bottom. So in that top right corner, if that was a, an end post that you had to make longer, that angle, that red line shows you where that same size hole is going to come out on the bottom, and the uh, the rail will flow right through. So these are all the things that you can do just having that one pencil mark on the rail. That just shows cutting the angles. And then remember, you've always got to put the locking ring hole back in place. Locking. Using the porter band to cut it. So that's basically the angle we were going for. Uh, no particular reason why, we just wanted to see how, how sharp we could make it. So one of the things that, to remember is that when you are opening the, the holes in the post, always do it towards the center. You might have a tendency to want to go you know, higher, but that's going to make you pick it too short and you're going to lose your reference point if you do that. So always go towards the center of the post when you're opening your holes. And that just shows how we opened it up. Now also that pencil line, that angle, is going to be the same angle for your aluminum channel. So we just stood the channel in place, we put a pencil mark on it, and cut it, and then screwed it to the post. So now that post was set, the corner post, and we could start building the, the panel up. So in this situation, we, we, we the, this first panel was a full panel. 
And so we just kept building on it. Again, tongue up. And building on it, building on it. And when we got to the top, we put the locking ring in and slid that in. So that's the finished panel. Um, so then we had to cut the pickets on the angle to, to achieve that rack. So there's the angle, and again, that was established by having that pencil line. And we deducted from the overall length for the aluminum channel and for the screw heads. And then we just started putting the pickets in, putting them in. And now what may happen here, we got lucky. Um, instead of having nine pickets in the, in the full flat panel, this turned out to be eight pickets. We didn't have to rip one. But depending on the angle that you're going for, you may end up ripping that last picket. And we put the top row on, and that was our finished product. So you can pretty much do any angle, but you've got to do it you know, individually, and, and everything has to be cut. But it just shows that you can you can wreck the fence if you need to. A bit of field fabrication. So here's the field routers, the field uh, templates. Again, they're plastic. Uh, this one's the deco rail in the top right corner. And then I built a little jig, just a wooden jig. So if you're doing a lot of work and you've got a lot of drop downs to do, um, you you can just slide a post in there and on the other end of it, I've got a bolt that I can pull out. And when I pull that bolt out, I can move the post up through the through the holes a little bit and get my drop down. And then I just use a cedar shim to hold the thing in place. And now you can probably run a post in a minute, maybe a minute and a half. This is the router again, so another one that you can use as a laminate cutter. Um, it's a little less expensive, uh, but the blade is always sticking down, and um, it's, uh, it's not the safest router in the world. But again, this, the important stuff there is on the bottom, the 3 8 blade and the 5 8 bearing guide. They're the two important numbers when you're using any of our templates. And that just shows you why. So your bearing guide is running around the template and your blade is actually cutting about an eighth of an inch away. But you'll end up with a nice professional looking cut once you've done that. Uh, warm out brackets, if you have to go into a wall, we have two different kinds. We have the warm out bracket with plate and warm out bracket with no plate. This is the no plate version. And where you would use that is if you have um, a post that you can run the rail into. So your your wall, you can mount the mount the bracket on the wall, uh, run the post. I'm sorry, run the rail into the post and then over the top of the bracket and put screws in from the side, and that will be your finish. And there's snap caps and washers to give you a, a much nicer look. So that, that would be using the one with no plate. Then if you have a situation where you have two solid surfaces, so you're going between two brick pillars, uh, where you have no sideways movement, you would use this one, which is the wall mount with plate. Um, and you would cut the rail to size minus the two plate thicknesses drop the plate down in where you want it, get it level, and drive your screws into the wall. So that's how you would use that. The only thing with this product is they're only available in white. So if you are using the dark colors, you might want to paint them. These are our easy set brackets. So if you're doing an on concrete situation, um, with this product, you wouldn't use the first one because everything is a 5x5 five five post. But you're going to use a 2-inch SS40 galvanized pipe. 
put that into the concrete and then put a bracket on the top and the bottom and slide your PVC post right over it. Some people like to go right through the concrete with the post. Um, I like this because the two inch pipe uh, you can put into a three inch core drilled hole and you don't see that outside of the, the perimeter of the post. It's all hidden. And this, this is actually an old picture, but it's this is your gate upright. So if you had a situation where you needed uh, to go up against uh, the wall or a house or whatever, and you didn't want to use the wall mount brackets, this is another alternative. Uh, you, you'd have to check with customer service for size and color, uh, but there is a top cap for this, and you can use the routing templates to make the holes. That's it. Anybody have any questions? Okay. Yeah, so far we don't have any questions. So if you have a question, type it in and we can have Pat answer it live. If you come up with a question afterwards, feel free to send it to your customer service person or your territory manager and we can get an answer to you. We'll give it a minute here in case anyone wants to type in a question. You can always call us too if you have any questions. All right, well, it looks like we're not getting any questions coming in for this one, so hopefully Pat covered everything and you're good with the um, Brookline fence. It's a um, popular look with the horizontal with the Brookline and the Breezewood that have really started to take off for us. So, yeah, uh, we just had a question, do you have other horizontal offerings? So, yes, we've got the Breezewood, which is a semi-private version. And that one there, that one definitely gets into a lot more technical when you try to rack it. So there you're better off stepping that style fence. But yes, we've got the semi-private version, the Breezewood, and then we have the Brookline, which is your full privacy version. And we, we have a full um, PowerPoint presentation on the Breezewood on web source. Yep. And this presentation will be posted on web source afterwards as well. So if you have other people in your company that couldn't attend today that you see benefit, you can just go into web source and you'll see a recorded version of this so they can go through the presentation as well. Okay, once again, thanks everybody for attending today. And oh, another question, so. Uh, do we do you have black post and rails, or can you paint these black? Um, no, we do not extrude black post and rail. Um, and personally, I wouldn't recommend painting them. Uh, there isn't really a paint that sticks real well to it. The PVC. Yeah, and one thing, if you painted the post and the rails that would void the warranty as well. So then you would be losing the warranty coverage on it. Oh, right. You're welcome. Thanks, Tony. And again, if you come up with questions afterwards, Feel free to reach out to us and we'll be more than happy to answer your questions. And with that, let's hope the um, weather breaks and we start putting some fence in the ground and have a great 2019. So again, thanks everybody. Thank you.